Hi guys, today we're going to be showing you our baby horse basic checklist. Some of our favorite things to do after we break our horses in. These exercises should give you a really solid foundation no matter what discipline you plan to pursue with your horse. So let us know what you think and here we go. Okay, step one, we are going to make some halts. Seems pretty obvious, I know, but really important to make sure that when we do touch the reins, they understand that their legs need to stop moving. So, first things first, I want you to prioritize what their legs are doing because we don't want to obsess too much about what they're doing with their head. They're probably not going to halt perfectly round every time when they're babies. We're talking about these horses have just been broken in and they're at that really early stage where there's still going to be some resistance coming down. You can correct some of that resistance. We make sure with all of our breakers that a rein back is really instilled. Rather than roundness, it would be nice to prioritize their posture, that they don't come way above the bit or pull right down when you ask for that hold, that they kind of maintain the position of their neck and the overall positioning of their body as they come into the halt. That would be a more attainable goal at this stage. You will also hear, see here that Fleur doesn't love to stand still. That's okay. At least at this stage, she is working nicely in the hand with her halt but she's a bit unsure so we just correct that we don't make her halt for too long we'll move back on again to encourage her to start thinking forward again and then she probably won't want to pause but it's just all a process now don't forget that we also need to reinforce the upward transition because the more you tune up that downward transition into the halt the they may become a little lazy off the leg, so we want to make sure that moving forward we're getting really great responses there as well. To do this, you can use a system of increased pressure, so make a little squeeze and then a big squeeze and then a kick or whatever, but just remember to keep it quite quick. The horses, especially baby horses' attention span is not going to be that long, so if you leave a whole minute in between a correction, that's not going to reinforce your aid. We want to encourage them to respond to a lighter aid, which means we have to consistently correct a lack of response with a stronger aid. So they learn to go off the lighter aid that you ask with first, if that makes sense. I don't know if I just explained that a bit confusingly, but anyway, hopefully you get the point. A system of increased pressure. Start lighter, get stronger quickly so the horse understands that if he doesn't go when he's told that he's going to get a little bit of a consequence from that and then he will start to respond from the first aid hopefully ultimately that's the goal anyway now don't forget that baby horses love praise they love to know that they're doing the right thing so re reward a small effort you know even here that's positive that Fleur came back she did what she was told even though she didn't stand still it's still a, a positive transition for now we're not going to really tell her off about that and remember, it's worth doing this, worth spending the time on it, because this is going to dictate a whole lot. It's building the foundation for the future for your half halts. If you don't have a halt at these early stages, you're not. it's going to be a slow process trying to develop a half halt and everything that comes from that. So this is really important to spend the time. I know it's boring, it's a little tedious, but spend the time here to save time and problems later. We want to make sure these basics are so established that we don't run into problems later on that we're just going to have to come back and fix, which can sometimes be harder. These baby horses are always thinking and learning quickly, so put it in now and you won't regret it. Step two is just going to build on step one, but we're making trot and canter transitions. You can also do trot and walk transitions, anything that's going to help just make the horses respond better. Now we find that a lot of our breakers will come 
through a little bit on the lazier side, maybe from all the desensitizing that we do to make them nice and safe and confident. They're not super worried about us flapping around up there, so they tend to be a little extra relaxed. We don't mind this, but it does mean that when we get started, we're gonna have to get that forward button going. And the quicker you do this, the quicker they can keep moving forward. Okay, the, the longer that they're lazy for, that's gonna hold you back a little bit with your training moving, moving on. So I find that doing the trot canners is an awesome way of getting this instilled really quickly because you're gonna find all that resistance you can see there. Any of that is gonna be really obvious. So you'll be able to feel when they're in front of your leg, when they're not, it's gonna help you to determine it and fix it a little quicker because they're gonna learn pretty soon that they've gotta listen up and be coming back and forward. Gotta keep thinking all the time. Okay, so I wanted to include this because now we're of the mindset that this wrong leg picking up, even though it's a little bit frustrating, he's still responding forward. So we're not going to tell him off too much because he's still at a stage where we want to encourage that and nurture that positive reaction, even if he's picking up the wrong leg again and again. Oh, yay, we got it. So don't be alarmed too much. Still, you know, try and prioritize that. Use your balance to help guide them onto the right leg as you start. I think he has done that before. I think it's because we did so many on the other rein that when we came to the left rein that he was a bit unsure that he could still pick up the left lead the duffer okay so you can see here with Flo you know she's coming off the bit a little bit in the transitions but we don't mind because we're just prioritizing is she going when she's asked is she coming back when she's asked what are her legs doing what are her feet doing when we ask her you know that that resistance is really secondary to this Again, you're going to want to bring in that system of increased pressure for the upward and the downward. Okay, if they don't listen to that first light aid, back it up with something stronger. Same if they don't listen to a little half halt when you ask them to come back, you're going to use a little bit of a stronger one and teach them that they need. So they really need to go off a lighter aid. So be really strict and clear with that. Okay, step three is another sort of variation building on the same blocks as the previous exercises we've already done. So we're going to be, I mostly prefer this exercise in chop, but you can definitely do it in walk, you can do it in canter, but it might be a bit hard for the stage that these horses are at at the moment. But we're going to go forward and make big chop and then come back and make small chop. Now, the added benefit of this compared to the other exercises, we're hoping that we can encourage them to let go of their back. Some breakers are a little bit tight through their back and this is going to teach them to use it, um, become more flexible and elastic over their back so they can start to swing more. And we really want to teach them to move to the best of their ability when they're young and supple like this. Okay, if we leave it till they're, you know, they're crooked and they've got habit, bad habits or whatever, you're going to have more problems. You've got the best chance at the beginning to really make them as supple and as even on both sides as you can. The other thing we're looking for when we're going up and back like this is the beginning of a kind of generous, nice half halt. And we want to hopefully, when we come back, that the shoulder can lift a little bit, the hind leg can come underneath, and you get that shift of balance, which is going to encourage them to carry themselves a little bit more and get a little stronger, get a little stronger behind especially. And that's, that's really what we're looking for here. If they can take the bit at the same time, that's great. But if they're not, you can still do this exercise and it should help to improve the contact because you're making everything in their body feel better. Okay, it's kind of a therapeutic exercise when they're learning as well. Nice stretchy exercise longitudinally over their back. Okay, would you believe that this is my favorite of all our exercises? It solves a billion problems, but I forgot to take Carbo and Fleur doing it. I missed those videos, so here's Ted for you all. Now, here we are making left and right turns with a straight neck, so we're really turning the shoulder. So to do that, you can keep your non-turning rein 
your elbow by your side and nice and firm and your turning rein can open a little, it can vibrate a little bit to guide that turn and then we want to ride really forward. Make them as random as you can, make, put them everywhere and do a billion, trillion of them. The more you do, the better your horse is going to become, it will become straighter, It will you get control of those shoulders, then you can add in a little yield through the ribs and get some awesome bending happening through here. It's going to set you up with some great tools to control the shoulder for all the lateral work you will do in the future. So this is another great one. And this one is going to be a test of the rhythm. So first things first, establish your rhythm. Get it in your head. One, two, one, two, one, two. Count it. Make sure you know it off by heart and you're really sensitive to any changes to it because then you're going to give away your contact. You're going to break contact, give it, give it away completely, put your hands up near their ears, look stupid, exaggerate it. It doesn't matter. It's a learning exercise. Oh, <laughs> Garbo. Um, so you're going to put them forward and you're going to make sure that they do not creep faster at all, not even 5% faster. They've really got to keep that rhythm the same and we make sure that they hold their rhythm and they learn to go in a rhythm without you reminding them all the time. You know, you want them to kind of learn to develop their own rhythm. So we're sort of saying, okay, this is the rhythm I like. Here's the chance. Here's your opportunity to make the mistake. If they do, we just make a little vibrate, a little half hold, correct it, reorganize and try again. And we'll do it again and again and again until they understand that the rhythm belongs to you and not to them and that they really have to use their brain and stick to it until they are told otherwise. Okay, I would say this is probably one of the toughest things you'll start is when you do that initial yielding. Hopefully in the breaking process, whether you've broken yourself or you've had someone else do it for you, they will have introduced some yielding so that will help it transpire from the ground onto their back or when you're on their back. So we're going to start basically, you can start, you don't have to start along the wall like we have. I've just done this so it's easy for you guys to see. They're going to fall out, they're going to do all kinds of things. The first priority is to just try and pop the inside leg on and see that they move sideways. That they understand that two legs, okay, two legs going on means go forward and one leg, that whichever leg it is, means move away is a really important step to make sure you've got in place that these early stages so first thing and here we're on getting that left we've just swapped now so the right leg will be working so we're going to get that right leg on and we're just going to use it to encourage them to go sideways okay the left rein needs to be nice and firm so they know which direction they're going a little bit of flexion to the right here will just help to unlock them and kind of align their body in a way that enables them to easily move across. Okay, don't worry too much about the falling in and out. Just make sure you've got that outside rein fairly firm so that the shoulder doesn't drift massively and you do still get a little bend through the ribcage and a little engagement from that inside hind leg. And you can see Fleur has not done this before. This is her very first time and she's a little bit confused. She doesn't love it. She does tend to get a little bit tight behind the saddle so it's going to work all these muscles that she's not used to doing. But Ben's just going to kind of move that inside leg around until she steps across and we're going to do little bits and make sure you reward those little bits. Another great thing to think about is doing one step across and then go forward again. One step across and then go forward just to break it up and make sure you're just not sliding the whole way. Okay, you can keep checking in to make them straight, reorganize and start again. Having that control is really useful in the leg yield for building on it later on as well. So I think that is us pretty much done for today. There's a few extra exercises I would have liked to include, but I think this exercise this 
uh, episode is long enough as it is and you guys have plenty of homework if you want to join in on what we do. The other thing guys for you that don't have a young horse at the moment, these exercises are always great to have a good tune up with any horse. Okay, When you come back to basics and really hammer them, you can get huge rewards and huge benefits from that too. So have fun and let us know if you have any questions and we'll see you next time.